Hey there, this is Handyman007 and today I'm gonna show you the steps I took to repurpose this scrap iron stand into a waterproof raised plant rack, which by my estimate can hold up to 21 medium-sized pots. This was actually given to us by our neighbor who was ready to take it to the junk shop. Now, what's interesting about this assembly is that it used to be a platform for an aquarium. Our neighbor is a fish enthusiast who recently decided to replace this old one with a new one with different dimensions. Since my wife did need the extra space for her potted plants, we agreed to transform this 8x2 feet metal stand from this into this. So let's go! So, you might be thinking, why would we even need to set potted plants off the ground? Since the plants are already potted, wouldn't it be easier to just line them up on the ground? Well, aside from aesthetic purposes, raising them high gives them added protection. You see, when plants, especially the food-bearing ones, are on the ground and outdoors, they become easy prey to crawling insects are eaten by stray cats and pissed on by dogs. At least this is from our experience. Also, it's harder to do some gardening when you have to be bending over, crouching, or sitting instead of just standing up. So as far as our height requirement goes, this former aquarium stand is perfect. The first step is to level it. Actually, that's not exactly right. I should say to position it at a certain angle. Unlike this raised self-watering planter, which I needed perfectly horizontal because it has a built-in drain system at the bottom. If you're interested how I built this, check out the info card on the upper right, or if you don't see it, search in the description below, right after watching this video. This assembly, on the other hand, I need to tilt the backside downwards. This way, water will never pool on the surface and instead slide off at the back. However, the legs of this frame are so thin, they sink into the soft soil. So what I did was to place these old bricks under each leg, making sure that the front legs are about half an inch higher than the rear ones. This center leg is a bit shorter than the rest, so I slid a piece of rock onto the brick to compensate. Now that we've got our stand on the proper tilt, the second step is to fill these four gaping sections with something solid. In essence, it would be like transforming this stand into one long table. The good thing about this top structure is that it is made of steel angle bars. This means that I could just cut pieces of wood to the right length and simply drop them into each frame, using the horizontal side of the angle bars as a support or catch. However, if I'm going to use wood on steel, it occurred to me that eventually I need to waterproof the entire surface since after all, this is exposed outdoor. Now I could use a combination of epoxy primer and finishing paint, but I figured it would take more effort and even cost more, about 900 pesos at least. So aside from paint, is there a cheaper and quicker option? Well yes, and as you may already spotted in the intro, it's rubber matting. But the real question is, where can rubber matting be purchased in bulk and for how much? Before I show you where, let's get the width and the length of the structure, so I know exactly how much rubber matting I need to purchase. Alright, let's go. And our journey takes us here, our local shoe supply store. Just outside the premises, we have these samples hanging here where customers can choose from a variety of patterns, colors, and thickness. For our project, I'm going for this specific matting, and I don't need it to be extra thick because it will rest on a solid wooden metal surface anyway. For this one, a single roll is only 270 pesos, but is a whopping 8 feet long and 4 feet wide. It's as big as a standard piece of plywood. So after paying for it, a store personnel gets your item from a storage area at the back, rolls it up, and loads it to your vehicle. This is my ride, so let's go back home. 
finding value from this video, hit subscribe and the bell icon to get notified of new uploads. Thanks! So this is our rubber batting with the pattern I chose. For now, I need to flip it over because the back side is flat and therefore easier to measure and draw my cut lines. Now what you should take note of is that I'm measuring 1 inch of excess on all sides. So if for example, our table is exactly 90 inches long and 24 inches wide, then I'll be cutting the mat 92 inches long and 26 inches wide. This 1 inch of excess matting on all sides is called an overhang. And later, I'll show it to you in action and why it is so important to have it. Okay, let's set this aside for now. Meanwhile, it's time to cover our gaping holes. And it just so happened I have a bunch of these 3 4 inch plywood from previous projects. So off camera, I cut them to the right dimensions and piece them together like a jigsaw puzzle. Because I cut the wood precisely, some of them are a bit snug to just slide down. Nothing my old hammer can't pound into place. Now since I didn't have enough scrap wood, there are some small gaps. By repositioning some of the wood, I was able to even out the gaps so they become small enough not to be an issue. Okay, I think that should do it. Let me just sweep the dirt and dust off a bit. Now let's cover the entire surface with our rubber matting. At this point, I'm checking and adjusting the mat to be at dead center. This way, there's about 1 inch of overhang on all the sides. Since we are going to set plant pots on top of this, there's no need to fasten the matting onto the structure because the collective weight of the pots should be more than enough to hold it in place. Okay now, let me set my wife's plant pots into position. She can reposition them later if she wants to. For now, I'm just placing them in a way I think looks good to me. Now here's the interesting part. I wanted to see how our waterproof surface holds up in a real world test. So let me bring out our garden hose and do this. Notice how water slides from the center and off to the sides, especially to the rear. And because we have an inch of overhang on all sides, we don't need to worry about water ever touching the wood underneath, so it always stays dry down there. So there you have it. This is how we upcycled an old aquarium stand into a plant stand that can withstand outdoor elements. In your home, you might have an old table, office desk, or anything that has a flat surface that you want to get rid of. So here's an idea. You might be able to repurpose them into a plant stand. And to do that, all you might need is a piece of rubber matting from your local shoe supply store. A quick and cheap way to waterproof any surface without using any paint. This is Handyman007. Thanks for watching.